There's numerous videos with wonderful animations that do a great job illustrating theory of carburetor operation, better than anything I currently have the skill to create. There is one detail I'd like to correct that I think will help with understanding. Carburetor jet circuits are often referred to as low, mid, and high speed. I'm not sure where this misnomer originated, but I suspect it has to do with the velocity or speed of airflow, and not the speed of the engine itself. This illustration of the high speed jet circuit implies the throttle plate is in the wide open position when the engine is running at high speed. This Kohler powered pressure washer is running at the high speed setting and the throttle plate is clearly visible as not wide open. When squeezing the spray trigger and applying load to the engine, the governor system reacts to maintain speed, but the throttle plate does not remain at or near wide open. Opening the throttle plate fully allows the most air and fuel the carburetor can deliver, therefore achieving maximum engine power. A properly designed application like this pressure washer will not require the throttle plate to continuously remain wide open. For better understanding, I'm going to refer to carburetor jet circuits as pilot, intermediate, and main. And instead of relating throttle plate position to engine speed, I'm going to relate it to engine power. Before we leave this amazing graphic, I'd like to point out an error. All jet circuits will provide fuel at all throttle plate positions, meaning the intermediate and main jets will provide fuel when the throttle plate is at or near closed and the pilot and intermediate jets will still provide fuel when the throttle plate is wide open. The pilot jet circuit provides the least amount of fuel, therefore producing the least amount of engine power. The intermediate jet circuit combined with the pilot jet increases the amount of fuel, therefore increasing power output of the engine. The main jet circuit, combined with the pilot and intermediate jets, provides the most fuel, therefore allowing the engine to create maximum power output. Although we can't see the pilot or intermediate jets from this angle, we can see the throttle plate is nearly closed and some fuel is coming from the main jet. The speed control is set to mid-speed. Engine speed is now at high speed. The throttle plate is still seen as near closed and fuel is steadily coming from the main jet. If we could see the pilot and intermediate jets, we would see fuel steadily coming from both. When squeezing the spray trigger and applying load to the engine, the throttle plate can be seen opening further to maintain engine speed, and the main jet is providing a steady shower of fuel. Behind the throttle plate, the same would be seen from the pilot and intermediate jets. Pressure is now set to max, increasing load on the engine. The throttle plate can be seen momentarily reaching wide open when the sprayer is engaged. The true purpose of the throttle plate is to control vacuum. 
When the throttle plate is partially closed, there is a high amount of vacuum on the engine side. This vacuum is required to draw and atomize fuel from the pilot and intermediate jet circuits. As the throttle plate is opened, the high vacuum line moves to the Venturi. The Venturi is a fixed restriction designed into the carburetor. Vacuum generated by the Venturi is required to draw fuel from all jet circuits of the carburetor. Because engine speed is slow during startup, there's not enough vacuum to draw the necessary amount of fuel without adding another restriction. This restriction is known as the choke plate. Closing the choke brings high vacuum to the entire carburetor, drawing maximum fuel from all jet circuits. Check out our videos on YouTube for additional information on Kohler choke systems. We can't have a conversation about carburetors without talking about rich, lean, and stoichiometric. If you've heard of the stoichiometric air-fuel ratio, you've probably been taught that 14.7 parts of oxygen to one part fuel, in theory, is the ideal ratio for a gasoline engine. Anything below 14.7 to 1 is defined as rich, and anything above is defined as lean. Between 14 to 1 and 12 to 1 are more realistic operating air-fuel ratios, both being on the rich side of the scale. When rich is used to describe a running condition, it's usually in the context of a problem, like blowing visible black smoke from the exhaust, lacking power, and being unable to reach the high-speed setting. This condition is more accurately described as excessively rich. Running rich is not a problem when it occurs at the right time, like when load is engaged and the engine is doing work. Under these conditions, a rich air-fuel ratio is required. Some carburetors are equipped with an accelerator pump. A spring-loaded diaphragm is actuated mechanically or released with a sudden loss of vacuum. When the throttle plate is rapidly opened, the accelerator pump squirts extra fuel to maintain a rich air-fuel ratio. When the engine is turned off, fuel is pulled from the carburetor as the engine slows down. This fuel can create an undesirable afterbang, sometimes called a backfire, that occurs moments after the engine has quit running. A fuel shutoff solenoid can reduce the risk of afterbang by blocking the main jet when the engine is turned off. Not all carburetors are equipped with shutoff solenoids. No carburetor conversation is complete without talking about air filtration. The air filter design needs enough volume to supply the engine without excess restriction, but enough filter restriction to prevent debris from damaging the engine. Numerous designs are used with larger engines requiring larger filters. A foam pre-filter is often used and may be oiled to better capture small debris. Be sure to read the instructions to identify if oiling is recommended. 